In this video we are going to talk about the lacrimatory reflex such an interesting thing we have to see first we have orientation this is the base of the skull this is the cranial fossa and here is the clivus here is the body of the sphenoid you could see I think here is the pituitary fossa or cella tarsica and here is the clivus in this clivus only you will be having the brain stem the most important part of the brain stem pons and the middle oblongata is situated here this is your foramen magnum this is our important bone petrous part of the temporal bone here only you will be having the middle ear and the inner ear <coughs> and here you have the external acoustic meatus and now we are going to start look at this this is the brain stem brain stem contains medulla pons and midbrain midbrain pons and medulla oblongata here is your cerebellum now what happens this medulla oblongata contains last four cranial nuclei it means 9, 10, 11 and 12 and here you will be having pawns 5, 6, 7 and 8 5 is your trigeminal, 6 is your abducens, 7 is your facial and 8 is your vestibular cochlea so all the four nucleus are present inside the pawns the nerves will be coming out in this junction called ponto medullary junction so this is the now 6th, 7th, 8th will be coming out through this ponto medullary junction so our nerve is your 7th nerve so the 7th nerve is coming out after coming out where it should go because I said this is that this brain stem area is located in this area so what happens the nerve after it comes out it enters into the internal acoustic meatus along with the 8th nerve vestibular cochlear nerve and labyrinthine vessels so it is entering into the ear okay this is the petrous part of the temporal bone so it has to go inside and what happens next before that you should know what is present inside the pons pons you will be having the nucleus you have the facial nerve nucleus from the facial nerve nucleus you can see the main motor nucleus which supplies the muscles of the facial expression and you have the accessory nuclei which is called the superior salivatory nuclei and the lacrimatory nuclei from the superior salivatory nuclei and the lacrimatory nuclei other nuclei also we do have that we will read in some other chapter facial nerve chapter solitary nucleus and tractor solitarius now you see the superior salivatory nucleus and the lacrimatory nucleus some fibers are coming out and that fibers joins with the other facial nerve tractor solitarius and the spinal nucleus fibers and together it is called as nervous intermediate part of the facial nerve it is called as nervous intermediate part of the facial nerve these two fibers will be joined okay it will be going together okay so from this nervous intermediate part you can see a ganglion that is called as geniculate ganglion why it is called genu genu means there is a bend that's why it's called as geniculate ganglion so now the nerve is coming out the main nucleus we are seeing here so the lacrimatory nucleus nervous intermediate component of the facial nerve so while writing you should write new lacrimatory nucleus from there nervous intermediate component of the facial nerve after that it reaches the and forms the ganglion called geniculate ganglion the geniculate ganglion you can see is here near inside the petrous part of the temporal bone here you can see the nerve is coming out and then it is entering into the canal called the facial canal the facial canal is has a horizontal part and a vertical part the horizontal part only we are going to discuss here is your geniculate ganglion from the geniculate ganglion your nerve is coming out on the petrous bone that is your greater petrosal nerve look at this greater petrosal nerve is coming here and it reaches the foramen and lazerum here beneath that you will be having the carotid artery is coming through but let us see where is the carotid canal <coughs> look at this this is the area where your internal carotid artery is entering this is the carotid canal so internal carotid artery while entering there is a nerve plexus from the superior cervical ganglion the sympathetic nerve plexus will be surrounding the internal carotid artery so this from that uh, nerve plexus a nerve is going out that is called as deep petrosal nerve so what happens already i said the greater petrosal nerve is coming here and the greater petrosal nerve joins with which petrosal is coming down from the internal carotid artery it joins with the deep petrosal nerve so already greater petrosal nerve already we know and it joins with the deep petrosal so deep petrosal all the students should know that deep petrosal is a sympathetic nerve that is coming from the superior cervical ganglion that is a sympathetic ganglion 
from there the nerves they form a plexus around the internal carotid artery from there only your deep petrosal is coming so your greater petrosal and deep petrosal they join and forms the median nerve this median nerve they reach the ganglia called pterygopalatine ganglion so where is that pterygopalatine ganglion what is that fissure this is the maxilla and this is the pterygoid plate between these two there is a fissure called pterygomaxillary fissure the pterygomaxillary fissure if you go inside you will be having the ganglion called pterygopalatine ganglion so inside that only you will be having the pterygopalatine ganglion this pterygopalatine ganglion is hanging down from the maxillary nerve right so the maxillary nerve so this pterygopalatine ganglion it will go it will get relayed in that it is getting relayed and then from uh, there fibers will be taking which uh, nerve is what is this process present here look at this this is a pterygopalatine pterygomaxillary fissure inside that only you have the pterygopalatine ganglion the pterygopalatine ganglion uh, which nerve is passing through uh, maxillary nerves and the most important branch of maxillary nerve is what is your the, this bone zygomatic okay zygomatic facial is here what is this part temporal so what is the nerve lying here zygomatic or temporal so from here the nerve fibers which are coming from the pterygopalatine uh, ganglion they will catch the zygomatic or temporal nerve from the zygomatic or temporal it will catch the nerve here which is going to the lacrimal gland is lacrimal nerve so via the lacrimal nerve it goes and supplies the lacrimal gland so again i repeat now i have removed the zygomatic process you can see very well the pterygopalatine ganglion and then inside that only the nerve is coming out here is the zygomatico temporal nerve is present here so it should catch the zygomatico temporal now we will see the pathway nicely superior salivated nucleus or lacrimatory nucleus from there the nervous intermediate component of the facial nerve is coming and then it forms a genu bend that uh, geniculate ganglion is forming here geniculate ganglion gives a a uh, very important branch called greater petrosal nerve the greater petrosal nerve joins with the deep petrosal nerve deep petrosal nerve arises from the superior cervical ganglia and the su superior cervical ganglia they form the sympathetic plexus surrounding the internal carotid artery from there your deep petrosal is coming greater petrosal and the deep petrosal nerve they join together and forms the median nerve the median nerve reaches the ganglion called pterygopalatine ganglion you keep it in mind all the ganglia they will be hanging down from one nerve for example ciliary ganglion means it has the connection with the nerve to inferior oblique like that here also it has connection with the maxillary nerve aortic ganglion it is hanging down from the mandibular nerve like that maxillary nerve ganglion is pterygopalatine ganglion mandibular nerve ganglion is aortic ganglion so it comes and it lies here so from here the branches will be going via the maxillary nerve maxillary nerve the most important branch is zygomatic temporal if it catches the zygomatic temporal then only it can go and uh, catch the lacrimal nerve lacrimal via the lacrimal nerve it goes and supplies the lacrimal gland so this is the lacrimatory pathway so how will you write in the exam uh, lacrimatory pathway look at this this is how you have to write the uh, lacrimatory pathway in the exam first you should write the lacrimatory nucleus and nervous intermediate component of the facial nerve and geniculate ganglion greater petrosal nerve joins with deep petrosal nerve if you want to give explanation about the deep petrosal nerve you can give forms the median nerve and reaches the pterygopalatine ganglion and uh, zygomatico temporal it will catch from there this pterygopalatine ganglion is hanging down from the maxillary and it should catch the zygomatico temporal and uh, via the lacrimal it will go and supply the lacrimal gland so this is how you have to explain the lacrimatory reflex.